Because what y'all just saw just now, a little while ago, you saw our own people come through here with paintball guns and shoot at the very same people who suffering in the streets just like them. Yeah. Proverbs chapter 1 verse 7. Read out. My son, if sinners entice thee, consent thou not. So stop. Those people in that red Mercedes Benz that just drove through here, they came with that plot that they're going to drive through over here, was it, 71st person exchange and shoot paintball guns at their own people. We already suffering in the, in the streets. We already getting shot down by the police, and now our own people want to come make sport Bring and it shoot us down, shoot, shoot us with paintball right. guns. But watch, Bring it out. my son, if sinners entice thee, consent thou not. If they say, come with us, let us lay wait for blood. Let us look privily for the innocent without cause. You see, that's what happened. America has told you you have no value for so long, you start to believe it. They call you niggas for so long, you start to believe it. So now this, these people over here driving around shooting paintball guns at each other, at you, because they see no value in themselves. Verse 18, and they lay wait for their own blood. See, eventually the Lord is going to judge them. And it's going to be their own blood that's required. Instead of it being green paint, it's going to be red blood splatter. Bring it out. That's going to be the judgment that's going to happen if we don't re return from our wicked ways. But I'm going to show you why. Amos chapter 3 verse 6. Because the thing is this. Whenever evil happened in the city, you got to understand the Lord did. It wasn't just by chance. It wasn't just by coincidence. Amos chapter 3 verse 6. You got it? Yeah. Amos chapter 3 verse 6. Read it out. Shall a trumpet be blown in the city and the people not be afraid? Shall there be evil in the city and the Lord have not done it? Why is the Lord punishing us? Why is the Lord allowing all these atrocities to happen? Come closer, brother. Why did the Lord allow this all those years ago and why is he allowing this today? Let me get Job chapter 36 verse 15. This is why. Because the Lord is allowing us to suffer because we have sinned against him. That's right. Watch this. But why is he going to use suffering to make us remember who we are? Why? Job chapter 36 verse 15. Read out. He delivered the poor in his affliction and opened their ears in oppression. So brother, let me ask you a question. You got children? Uh, yeah. So when your children would mess up or act bad growing up, what would you do? You'd give them a spanking, right? And that would cause them to change their ways and do better. Well, guess what? This is our spanking right here. Because our Father is our, uh, the Most High God, the Creator of all things. We think we nobody. We think we niggas. But we don't understand that our actual Father is the Most High. Bring it so up. when we sin against Him, He is going to punish us so our ears can be open, meaning we can hear the instructions of His words and turn from our wickedness and repent and keep the commandments. Let me ask you something. I don't want to ramble on too much. Let me ask you. You ever heard this information before? Yeah, yeah. What you heard about? Uh, okay, uh, gathering of Christ Church, right? You yeah, understood? Let me. I, so you you have the understanding of who we are according to the Bible and different things like that. Let me ask you another question. Do you understand the application of God's laws? Uh, yeah. Understood. You don't. So you don't eat pork. What about cigarettes? No. No. What about buying and selling the Sabbath? No, but let me ask you one more, brother man. What's this right here? Alright, so let me read the book. Let me read the book of Numbers chapter 15, verse 38. Numbers chapter 15, verse 38. Bring it out. Speak unto the children of Israel. So stop. You just said you know you're an Israelite, right? And you know that you know you and us were the children of Israel, right? And bid them that they make them fringes in the borders of their garments. So when it says and you bid them to make them fridges in the borders of the garments, what does that mean? What is he saying right there? Yeah, you, uh, bid, what does it mean by bid them? It means command them. It's a commandment, not a suggestion, not a request, a commandment, right? Read. And bid them that they make them fridges in the border of their garments throughout their generations. 
17. It's a reason why I'm kind of, you know, putting you on the spot right now. Because guess what? Guess what? I see when I see you, I see everything the Bible say the prophets look like, the, the angels look like, Christ look like, the most I look. So when I see you, I see value. And because I see value, I can't help but to love you because you're from my own people. And if I did not say anything, what am I doing? Leviticus chapter 19, verse 17. Thou shalt not hate thy brother in thine heart. Thou shalt in any wise rebuke thy neighbor and not suffer sin upon him. So to not suffer sin upon you, meaning I have to show you where you're erroring at. Hopefully, just like you would show me if I'm in error. You understand? So now knowing that you're an Israelite, is that just enough, just knowing? Or do you have to apply something? Why you ain't got the fridges on, brother? Yeah, I know. You're right. I ain't got supposed to All right, from this day forward, repent. Change your ways. Because let me get uh, Zephaniah 1 and 8. Because let me ask you something real quick. If Christ were to come back right now, the thing that we've been hoping for, the, the one thing, the event in all of history that every black Hispanic and the native Indian man been hoping for, the redemption, the salvation of, from our enemies, how, how would that situation go? And you not dress according to how he commands you to dress. Let's see. Zephaniah chapter 1 verse 8. It and it shall come to pass in the day of the Lord's sacrifice. So when Christ comes back and delivers judgment on the nations on this particular day, that I will punish the princes and the king's children and all such as are clothed with strange apparel. So it's strange to the Most High for a woman to be in pants. Sister, I'm talking to you. It's strange to the Most High for a brother to be in a dress. It's strange to the Most High for the children of Israel not to keep the commandment of wearing fringes. Why? Because it's a consistent reminder that we are to keep the laws of God. That's you understand? Right. So now, moving forward, you're going to change your ways? Then guess what? We out here, and that if, if that was the only change, then all praise to the Father. You know what I mean? So dialogue with this man. So how long you been uh, studying? Okay, you fellowshipping today? Well, no, I'm not right now. I'm just, I'm just getting into it. I'm like, I started, you know, five years. But you said five years, though. You said five years. Yeah. So, for five years, you said you just were on the bed, just just getting into it? Yeah, me too. You know, it, it's like I came out the church. You know, yeah, I understand. And, I heard things, and now I got to change my way. Let me ask you a question. If you found out somebody was poisoning your food for all these years, right? Are you going to take your time, stop eating that poison, or are you going to immediately stop? Immediately. That's right. So now you find out that you've been poisoned spiritually by all the doctrines and philosophies of the world, especially the Christian church. Why are you taking your time to change? Let me, tell you, let me show you something, bro. Psalms chapter 119, verse 59. I thought on my wings and turned my feet unto thy testimonies. I made haste. You made what? I made haste and delayed not to keep thy commandments. You see that? That's wisdom. So just how you said you heard the law and you changed your, you know, you changing, but he says he made haste to keep the commandments, meaning he did not procrastinate. He hurried it up. You know what I mean? He put some pep in his step. You have to do the same, brother. Do you understand? But let me show you something. Something's gonna happen when the children of Israel keep, keep the commandments. Revelation chapter 14 verse 12. Here is the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. So what happens when that scripture is applied? What's going to happen? What's going to happen to our enemies? Yes, the destruction of my enemies. What? And by our enemies being destroyed simultaneously, we are being redeemed. Aren't you tired of the conditions we live in? Aren't you tired of our current situation? So in order to change our current situation, we have to first change ourselves and align our, our lives up according to the scriptures. You understand? Hey, sis, you got a question? Yeah, I was showing them that, all right, let me show you, let me get uh, the book of Judas chapter five, verse 20. Because the thing is, we are clearly being overcome by the very same people that hate us. Right? Matter of fact, let me show you who our enemies are according to the Bible. Let me get the book of Psalms, chapter 83, start at verse 1. Let me show you something real quick. Because when we say our enemies, we don't want y'all to think that's just a vague statement. No, we have distinct enemies. Yes, and let's name them. And let's see what they're doing. Psalms, chapter 83, verse 1. Keep not thou silence, O God. 
hold not thy peace. So this is a prayer. He's saying, keep not that silence, O God. Hold not thy peace, meaning stand up for us. Why? And be not still, O God. For lo, thine enemies make a tumult. He said, look, your enemies have made an angry gathering against your people, right? Meaning the blacks, Hispanics, and Native Indians. All these people are gathering against us. How are they doing it? And they that hate thee have lifted up the head. They gathered enough power to overcome us. And what are they going to do when they did? They have taken crafty counsel against thy people. They have a secret meeting. So you don't think it's strange that the neighborhood is in the condition it's in? You don't think it's strange? You remember redlining? You remember uh, systemic racism? Systemic racism shows that it was a group effort. It shows you that people had to think this system out in order to mess you up. So they have taken crafty counsel. Read. And consulted against thy hidden ones. The topic of the conversations was us. They have talked about the hidden ones, meaning us, the blacks, Hispanics, the native Indians, the Israelites. We are the hidden ones. They have said, come and let us cut them off from being a nation, that the name of Israel may be no more in remembrance. So one of the first steps they had to do is cut you off from your nationality. Let me let him pass real quick. I, so one of the first steps they had to do was cut you off from your nationality, make you forget who you are. Because if you forgot where you come from, you, gonna, you ain't going to know where you're going. So oh, this is, I guess they was making noise on purpose. But let me say, so, so again, if you forget where you come from, you have, because now again, what happens to a person when you erase their past? The, the, you erase their identity. You understand? If I take away everything that you've ever known you were, then guess what? You yourself would think you have no value. You was like, I don't know who I am. I don't know what I'm worth. You know what I mean? Like for example, if you were born royal, right? And somebody kidnapped you from this big old palace and told you you was nothing and made you forget who, where you came from, then guess what's gonna happen? You're not gonna remember who you are. And you're gonna not remember who you are according to the scriptures, right? So look, real quick though. All right, so let me show you, read on. They have taken crafty counsel against thy people and consulted against thy hidden ones. They have said, come and let us cut them off from being a nation, that the name of Israel may be in no more remembrance. For they have consulted together with one consent. They are confederate against thee. Let's see who these people are, sis. The tabernacles of Edom. The so-called white man is the biblical name Edom. Because he came, his, his forefather is Esau. So he is the nation of Edom. To scream black power while Haram was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold. From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are how our men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.